Okay, let me introduce you to the Power Oak Max Oak EB150 to give it its full uh, title. This has a 101 amp hour lithium battery built into it. It has a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter, so you can power your 240, 230 volt apparatus. It has USBs on the front, a USB C as well. It has a 12 volt output for cigarette type uh, type lighter attachments and it has an input where you can charge it. And there's two ways you can charge it. The first way is via this um, mains brick that they supply and that just plugs into that and that plugs 240 volts. And the other way is via this solar panel. Now we took this away on our Scottish holiday and uh, we just finished that holiday now and to be honest it would have been great if we could have taken this away on our summer holiday. We could have made more use of the solar power I could have used this sitting outside the awning to charge my laptop. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you what we filmed about this uh, this Max Oak power unit and then I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of this unit and uh, let you know, see what we thought of it. Yeah, so it says it's a portable solar power generator, 1500 watt hours. So this is it charging. As you can hear, fans make a little bit of a noise. I mean, I'd say it's a lot. Before we set off anyway, we were wondering what we can actually use it for. So the, the first and most important thing is the Tassimo. And we'll put the AC on. AC is on. Switch the Tassimo on. I've got the. This is for just doing uh, fresh water, but obviously if it had coffee pod in there, I don't want to waste a coffee pod. So just close the Tassimo, and I'll switch this on. It says 1130 watts, and it goes for sort of 10, 900. Well there, uh, I think I'll just break in here. One of the things I wanted to see if I could do is use it to make coffee using the Tassimo machine that we've got. Uh, the Tassimo is a 1200 watt apparatus and whilst at first it seemed to work properly, um, it was, was actually not supplying enough current for the device because this is only a, a thousand watt sine, sine, pure sine wave inverter. This is what happened. Let me jump. And that pop that you heard was the actual pod exploding. Boy, did I get into a lot of trouble for that. It made a, such a mess. There was coffee everywhere. And uh, I was in such such trouble, I didn't film it. So you need to stick to appliances are, that are 1000 watts or less. So if we're off grid, can you use the hairdryer? Or can we use the hair? I use the hairdryer as well. So it's got two settings on the hairdryer. Yeah. Um, one and one, so one and two. But if you look at the label, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, the label says it's Argos. No, the label says uh, 1200 watts. So I suspect the 1200 watts is the second setting. Yeah, I, don't, I very rarely have it on there. So shall we try it? You've got to bear in mind that this is a, a total of a thousand watts at the back. No, it's warm, mate. So that's using 600 watts. If you put it on the second setting, it's still going. Yeah, and that is hot. Yeah. So, so you could use the, we could use the hairdryer. Yeah. 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 So the most important thing of all is can I use my toaster when we're off grid? And I normally have frozen bread, so the toaster has to be on the frozen setting. Put it down. 
There we go, at 770 watts. That's alright Yeah, so that's working quite well. My trouble with this toaster is <laughs> you have to turn the bread over because it never seems to toast the, bottom, the top or the bottom. And often uh, when we stop and so for lunch or something, yeah. we've forgotten to get any bread out of the freezer, haven't we? So it's frozen. Yeah. So we've ended up using the grill to make toast. But if we could use the toaster, we we'll save time. Yeah. Uh, well, you could it? defrost the bread, couldn't you, with the yeah, toaster? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because obviously you can't use the microwave. I like the fact that it tells you what's going on on there. There's a very simple display that tells you how many watts to use and what your battery's like. What does it say load of noise then? Well the, the, top the top one the top one is the input, that's if you're charging it. Oh I see. Yeah. The middle one is DC, so that's the USBs and the 12 volt output there. Right. And the bottom one is the AC. Is the AC. The AC is the one we're not charging and we're not uh, doing our phones. That's right. If we're doing our phones, the middle one would yeah. show something. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And obviously, right. we're at home at the moment. We're, we're, the van's plugged in, but I've not plugged that into any, any other supply, so it, 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 that is as if we're off grid. Wonderful. And you can see now that the the unit switches off and it will eventually power down on its own. Or if you want to you can just pull that for two seconds and switch it off. Impressed? Yeah, yeah. And the final thing for me is can it charge my laptop? Uh, let's get the battery charging thing up. Yeah, so it's on battery at the moment. Now this charging lead that came with this laptop, it's a USB only. Oops. And I don't have a 12 volt charger for it. I do for the old laptop, but uh, I've just plugged the laptop into the into the back there. I'm just going to switch the unit on. Just going to switch the unit on. Hold it for two seconds. Put the AC on. And there you are. Symbol. Yeah. yeah, and it's now charging up on there. It took a little while actually to switch on, but that might be the power supply on the laptop anyway. So it, that's 76 watts. So it's hardly anything. No. So that now means that I can charge my laptop when when we're not on hookup. If we wanted to charge our phones at the same time, can we do that? Do we press the D? Can you have DC and AC on at the same time? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to do that? So there we go. So two charge leads, a laptop, and two phones charging. Immediately switches off. I start filming it. can't see that but they are definitely charging. So what we've got there is two phones charging 14 watts, uh, a laptop charging 70 watts. Now these sockets here they're 3 amps max that way down and 3 amps max that way down. It's also got a USB-C lead there as well which you could use for something else and two more, two more sockets. But if you do plug the USB in there and there, it will reduce the actual current available to charge all your, all your gear. Right. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, that's going to be good for you to, in the summer, work in the awning. Yeah. Because you were coming to go in every time this uh, battery yeah, and down. when the battery runs out, you can carry on working now and just bring the power unit out to the awning. And you probably can't see this, but I'm charging the GoPro as well. <laughs> I can't film myself charging the oh, GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Go up to 17. Yeah, 17 watts now, if I plug the GoPro in. 14 watts, it's not done take a lot. No. So the other thing I could charge is my sat nav. Do you want to plug that in for us? Do I plug it into? You plug it into there. So it goes bang. <laughs> That's it. Oh. So the sat nav com comes on. It comes on when it finds power anyway. Mm. So what's going on on here now? Not a lot, is it? Still no. 69 watts. Um, 69 watts for the AC which is charging the laptop. Still doing that, isn't it? Yeah. 20 now it's now 20 watts. Yeah, since she says she's charging. And that's charging the sat nav. Yeah. Um so I mean the whole reason for doing all of this, charging all these gadgets, is because you don't really want to be using your van battery because your van battery will be doing the lights. Yeah and making sure the fridge works. It's nice to see that charging everything, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean the point it is the point is that you can charge just about all your gadgets when you're not on hookup. So this is a really <laughs> I'm really impressed with this. Yeah, yeah. It's a lithium battery, isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so whilst we're travelling I'm just going to keep it strapped to the battery uh, here so that's not going anywhere. A little strap in there. But you can see the size of it. It's only a little bit taller than the battery and a little bit longer. I did see if I could try and fit it in there. It doesn't quite fit in there. Ideally I probably want to move the battery over a little bit. but. Uh, no, that fits in fine. I can put my stuff that I normally keep in there, just down there. I don't keep an awful lot of stuff in this cupboard. It's not the biggest cupboard. But I've got my aqua roll, got my backup battery, my power oak, the re the main battery, and that's all under that sofa side. So yeah, no, that works really well. Yeah, let's just charge it up. Yeah, so I've got it charging. It's under the sofa. There's plenty of ventilation. There's a, a vent there and a vent there. And I haven't trapped this lead in there. Probably would be an idea if we could get a plug inside the cupboard rather than relying on this extension lead. I'd put some sockets on the outside of there. That would be good as well. But you can hardly hear it under the sofa. It's quieter than the uh, heating fan. Campsite. When we're on campsite, we can actually charge it up on the mains so if we do go out for the day we'll have a fully charged power unit to go out with so that's handy now in case you're curious about how much it takes to charge it up on the mains according to this supply it's using 1.3 there's hardly anything else on the charge is not going Yeah, we forgot that we bought this, the uh, little karcher, and it's a brilliant little thing for clearing, clearing your windows, and you can have it handy in the car or the motorhome, just to clear your windows before you set off. But it is steaming up again now. Yeah, these things are great, but if you want to leave them in the car, how do you charge them? Oh. Yep. I could charge that up. Does it just flash while it needs charging? Yeah. And then... No, that whilst it's charging, and then when yeah. it's finished charging, that stays green. Right. Okay then. So I can leave that on whilst we're going along. Yep. I'll find somewhere to put it. Wet. <laughs> we're struggling to find a find a bit of sun at the moment. What I might try is just putting that in the windscreen and see how much charge we get from it. Yeah. 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 One thing to be careful of, of course, is make sure you've got enough ventilation for the fans at the back. Yeah, so I've charged my karcher up whilst we've been going along. It was about an hour, was it? About an hour? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I'll switch it off now. There we go. 
all charged out pops. Right, so when you're charging the power oak from the mains, you get about 165 watts. I've also been sent a solar panel kit, and this is a 120 watt solar panel. And I uh, thought we'd just try that out, see how we get on. Yeah, so this has a lead with it. And these are for connecting into your existing uh, solar charger, um, solar controller. What they also send is an adapter you can use. So it's quite simple two leads you can't mix them up that one goes in there and that one goes in there so click fit and then you open this up two little clips here that folds out That's the thing. On the back, got some feet. One there, and one there. And if you turn it the right way up, it allows you to angle it at the sun. Right, I'm guessing the sun's over that way. It's a very um, overcast day today, so I'm not sure how much sun we're going to get, but we'll give it a go. And if you can see that, let's move you in a bit closer. I'm getting absolutely nothing at the moment, but if you look up at the skies, they're just grey. So I think we're going to have to try this on a sunnier day. And probably also shaded by those trees as well. That's a shame. If I look at my own solar power that I've got on the roof, that's only getting 0.3 of an amp, which is absolutely nothing really. So it's not an ideal day to be testing a solar panel. One other thing I thought I might try is see if I could put it in the windscreen. So I suppose if you had a sunny day but you didn't want to leave it outside, it actually fits in the windscreen. So I suppose that's quite handy. I suppose you could tilt it up a bit. Could perhaps use that to tilt it up. Yeah, so with a solar panel in the window, which is okay, you can leave it like that. At least you know it's safe and no one's gonna nick it. It is charging, but it's not registering more than one watt. So I suppose I guess it's probably, you know, like, like my solar panel is point two or point three or what so it's going to take a very long time to charge up using the solar panel on a day like today so it'd be interesting if we get a sunny day to try it out then so i thought we'll point it in a slightly different direction see if we get any more power no the screen's barely registering I know it's charging because when you when you plug it in, it responds. So I hope you found that interesting. Let's do the pros and cons. I'll do the cons first. This is quite a weighty unit. It's 17, I think 17 and a half kilograms. Oh, and it, oh, it is a bit, it's a bit heavy. So this is the second in the range of these units, and this is the EB150. The 150 uh, refers to the 1500 watt hour 
uh, battery that's built into it. There's the EB120, which is a hundred, uh, 1200 watt hour battery, the 1500, this one, the 1800 and the 2400 or 2400 battery. They, they vary only on the size of the battery, really. They all have a 1000 watt sine wave inverter. So I suppose if you want to spend a bit more money on the bigger battery, uh, perhaps if you're going off grid for longer, then it's possibly look, worth looking at some of the larger ones. For us, we don't spend a, a huge amount of time off grid, and this this is would be fine for us. But that is one of the uh, cons of this unit. It is only a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. It would have been nice if it had been something like a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter, but there you go can't have everything but like I say all the other units in the range have all got the same 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter it means you can charge quite a few of your gadgets but anything that's a sort of heavier load it's not gonna it's not gonna power those like our Tassimo. Another thing that uh, possibly could they could change is this input here the input says it's for DC 16 to 60 volts at 10 amps so it can take up to 10 amps but it would have been nice if they could have made it so you could charge it from 12 volts i.e the van battery um, I know some people have actually charged it from 12 volts but I think there's a danger of blowing fuses there so it can charge from solar or the mains brick that uh, they supply but it would have been nice if that had a 12 volt input and you could charge it as you're going along from the vehicle ignition or the leisure battery, I guess. So what are the pros? Well, it's great, really, if you are going off grid. Um, we don't spend an awful lot of time off grid, but this would be great as a backup when, we're, when we do our, go off grid. We've done camping in the forest. We've spent nights uh, parked outside friends' houses, and it'd be really handy to be able to rely on this to charge your phones and... Uh, your laptop and that sort of thing without draining the vehicle battery. It means that you don't have to install an extra battery or an inverter and uh, just for reference the the battery in here the uh, or 100 amp hour battery can cost about 1100 pounds on its own and that's before you even get to a sine wave inverter and uh, you've also got to factor in the cost of installation as well. So you've got it all in one package, so that's great. This is great if you want to use it outside. It's a portable power unit. I could take it out in the awning and I could use it to charge my batteries. I could take it out in the garden and use it to power the strimmer or um, perhaps the leaf blower this time of year. And also having the solar panel as well, that you can charge it with that. That's great if you don't want to install solar panels on your van, perhaps you've bought a van that doesn't come with solar panels, perhaps it's only got one battery. Um, something like this would be a really useful addition if you plan on spending time off-grid. So that's it for this little video. I hope you found it useful. Um, I certainly am very impressed with this unit and uh, it's relatively compact. Um, it does weigh a fair bit, probably about the same as a, as a battery and a sine wave inverter. But uh, let me know. What do you think? Is that something you would use? I mean, it's it. you've seen videos of this before, probably, and a lot of them have been people who are off-grid. I'm interested to know if perhaps, you know, people who don't spend quite so long off-grid would find this useful. Perhaps you're going out for the day and you're worried about charging your phones, or in our case, cameras. Uh, would you be using it? Let us know in the comments. So that's nearly it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Before you go, have a look in the description of this video. The links to all the products, including this one, are in, the, in that description. But what you'll also find is a fantastic Halloween giveaway. Uh, they're giving away nearly $25,000 worth of product. So do have a look at that. The link to enter the competition is in the description below. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed using this. It's been really good fantastic bit of kit let me know what you think give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it if you haven't already please subscribe and hit the notifications icon and i'll catch up with you in the next one